people, uh, a, lot, a lot more soldiers, a lot more weapons than Ukraine does. So uh, our prayer is with them. You talked about it. That's how big of a threat is China? China's the biggest threat we've got. Uh, you know, I'm in meetings every day. China is in the forefront of what's happening. You know, Russia wants power. You know, they want to expand uh, their growth. Uh, China wants to control the world. Uh, they want to control everything. They want to control us. Uh, they're moving. Uh, their economy is big and it's growing. It's moving past ours here in the United States. They've got a huge navy. Their navy's bigger than ours now. While we've been fighting these 20 year wars, China's been building. Uh, they've been building in space. Uh, they outnumber us in space. They outnumber us almost everywhere. So uh, we've got to keep our focus on, on the right thing, which is China. We've got to focus on us here in this country, to get our economy going again past this pandemic. And uh, we've got to understand our, our uh, uh, people that are on our side and the people that are not on our side. And we definitely know that China's not on our side. You talked to the WHO recently. Kind of, what are your thoughts on the pandemic and what you kind of learned from them? Yeah, the pandemic is slowing down here in the United States and all over the world. Uh, but COVID has produced different variants. We had the Delta, we had uh, Omicron, and now we've got this new one, BA1, that is coming. Now, I don't think it's here in the United States yet, uh, but it is parts of the world. It's not near as bad as uh, as the first one. Our Delta, our Omicron, it's just a lot more contagious. So we'll see what happens uh, down the road with it. But we got to get our country back going again. We got to get people back to work, get our schools open, uh, get people that uh, back to doing what they were doing before the pandemic. Our economy has really suffered, and we can't spend more money from the federal government because we're thirty trillion dollars, thirty trillion dollars in debt. Every taxpayer now owes two hundred and forty to fifty thousand dollars. Uh, to the federal government because of all, all the money that we've taken out and thrown around the country and uh, uh, it'll eventually have to be paid probably by our kids and grandkids. But we need to quit spending money and we need to get our economy back and keep our taxes low. Uh, Coach, you mentioned China, uh, that you said it was the biggest threat uh, to us. Other than them controlling a significant amount of production, uh, what is what threat does China offer to us? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to spread in the Indo-Pacific, and that's uh, there's three island chains uh, in the Indo-Pacific uh, from our west side, and one of the first islands is Taiwan, and they claim that Taiwan belongs to them, kind of like Russia claims that Ukraine belongs to them, and so they want to expand. Uh, we all know that. If we've been, if you've been keeping up with it, that Taiwan produces a large amount of the microchips uh, for cars, anything that has an on and off switch that we use here in the United States. That's the reason we're having problems right now is we don't make our own chips uh, like we will hopefully in the future, but Taiwan is on the forefront of microchips. So uh, China's gonna spread and they're gonna move to Taiwan, we've been told uh, publicly. Uh, people have heard this in the next five years from the Indo-Pacific commander. So we've got to prepare for uh, things that'll happen you know, from China. We've got to build up our forces there. It's a lot different than it was in the Middle East, but we've got all kinds of adversaries. We've got China, we've got Russia, we've got Iran. And uh, we, that's the reason we have to get our economy back and get our fuel and, and oil supply back as uh, uh, energy independent in this country because we cannot be uh, depending on other countries like we did in this pandemic, you know, to make our drugs, uh, you know, to make our, our construction supplies, uh, have to buy oil from them like we're buying 500,000 barrels a day from Russia uh, of oil as we speak. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. And, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to start drilling more oil in this country and get our country going and self-sufficient. We have time for one more. You talk about um, <clears throat> oil. Is there anything that the government can do to kind of get these gas prices lower? I know that's a problem for a lot of people. Well, supply and demand. Uh, oil is in big demand, and it has been. You know, the last administration, President Trump, had us oil independent. We had pipelines that were coming from Alaska, had pipelines coming from Canada. Uh, we were digging more, digging more wells. Uh, What's going to hurt us in here in Alabama is the federal judge just blocked uh, 80 million acres of land uh, to be drilled on in the Gulf. And we, we get a lot, a lot of taxpayer money from Gold Mesa, which 
any oil that comes from the Gulf of Mexico, we, as the state of Alabama, make tax money off of that, uh, and it's a lot of money. So we, 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 we can't be dependent on electricity. Uh, electricity is, a lot of, most of it is made by coal and, coal and oil. And so we have got to continue to drill, we've got to open our pipelines up, and we can't depend on other people for our energy. If we do that, then we're a lot more vulnerable than we would have ever been uh, had we uh, continued to drill. Thank you so much.